Hello everyone, welcome back to Alisa Lifestyle Vlog. So in today's video, we will be sharing um, direct hiring expenses for 2022. So I know marami sa inyo na gustong malaman kung how much talaga ang magagastos for direct hiring. So I invited my special guest so they can help me um, tell you detailed information kung magkano talaga nagastos nila. So they are from different sponsoring agencies. I will let them introduce themselves. Okay po, let me um, introduce myself. I am Liz, Lizelle, and I'll be teaching English. And then I am, uh, my visa sponsor is uh, Global Educational Concepts or Jack. Hello, good day to everyone. I'm Charlie Bendo from Tagaytay City, and I'll be teaching mathematics, fifth grade of mathematics. And my sponsor is Amity Institute. Okay, hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening here in the Philippines. Good morning in the US. I am Rajel, and I'll be teaching English, and my visa sponsor is ESI. And that is under IAG. Now, so we have three friends here from different program sponsors, from one from GEC, Amity, and the other one is IAG. Now, I hope that in this video, well, help you decide if you want to push through direct hiring for the next school year. Um, I'm just curious, what made you decide to apply as a teacher in USA? Okay, maybe um, Charlie wants to start first. Wow, actually, that's very interesting question, Miss Alisa. I know. Um, I've been teaching for almost 12 years, see you in the Philippines in a private school, no? Um, after last year pandemic, I decided to really um resign sa school and nag-transfer ako ng ibang business. So I joined in an insurance company on this business industry. And I could really say naman na naging successful ako dito sa business industry na to. Pero andun pa rin yung hinahanap-hanap ko yung passion ko sa pagtuturo. Because siguro nandun yung devo devotion ko as a teacher, no? So until I browse sa YouTube, nakita ko yung video ni Miss Alisa. And then I followed her. Palagi akong naiingan yung panoorin siya. Because I felt it nakapag pinapanood ko siya. Parang feeling ko, nandun na rin ako sa US. Andun ako, yung sinasabi niya, ramdam na ramdam ko. That's why I just decided to follow her and pinanood ko lahat ng mga videos niya until I decided, sabi ko, America to, aarte pa ba ako? So I decided na mag-apply dito as a direct hiring, no? So through the guidance and support of Miss Alisa ng mga videos niya, hanggang sa chinat-chat ko na siya, until I decided na mag-focus na rito sa application. Sabi ko, sino ba naman ako para humindi? Nasa USA na to, di ba? America na to. I think everyone, everyone is um, believing na lahat makapunta tayo doon sa America. So yun nag sa akin, yung passion ko as a teacher at saka yung dreams ko talaga na makarating ako ng America. Those are the factors talaga, Miss Alisa. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charlie. Now, how about Liz? Oh, um, yes, po. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you so much, ma'am, for the guidance, tips, and so on. No, malaking tulong po talaga yun. And I opted to, um, cho I mean, chose, I chose direct hiring because I wanted to save money. Like, that's my first reason talaga. And then I, well, I wanted to be in the USA because um, I just really believe the, and I, I believe that um, it's best for me you no know? and then also for my professional development skills you know for the improvement of my teaching strategies and also I believe Rena uh, it's the best way it's the best way for me to um, you know learn some educational new educational pedagogies so yun po all right yes that's really true and here punong puno ng professional development dito and there the school will provide weekly once a week professional development so yes you are in the right track now how about Raj? actually ma'am uh cliche as it may sound but uh, i really want to go to us because i want a greener pasture definitely for my family 
And um, aside from that, since the program is Exchange Visitor Program, so we are offered um, uh, the horizon and the system of what U.S. has to offer when it comes to education. And that excites me a lot because I really want to share um, the Filipino culture, the Filipino education to the American people and the if time comes that I'll be back and really given the chance that I'll be sharing the story of mine in U.S., I guess that's uh, the best story to tell and and all the things that happened. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. So now let's start with our main topic, which is direct hiring expenses. I'm sure maraming gustong malaman kung how much ba talaga nagastos or wala ba talaga magagastos sa direct hiring? All right, so now let's let's start. Um, let's start with stage one, Muna. Okay, so um, right after you get your job offer, sobrang happy tayo, di ba? Like, seguro to the highest yes. level. Yes. <laughs> and I got it. I got hired. Um, a principal wants me there, di ba? Sobra seguro ding fulfilling on your part kasi, di ba? Among other candidates, I tell you, um, there are so many applicants now. So if you got hired this year, meaning you are one of the best, I tell you, maybe 2016 during my time, sobrang konti ng applicants ngayon, hundreds or even maybe thousands, but you did it. Now, but after you got your job offer, after a few hours, you will realize, so paano na to? <laughs> so what's next, diba? And so the next stage will be the visa process now. And that time, you need to find a program sponsor. So ngayon, I want to, I want you to share to our audience kung how much you nagasa nyo sa stage one. So sa stage one, it is the program sponsor. They will not start your application if you will not fulfill their requirements. And of course, their program fee. All right. So who wants to start? Um, you want to start, Raj, this time? <laughs> Uh, regarding my visa sponsor, ma'am, as far as I know, IAG doesn't have a fee, and that is based on their budget exercise given to us. I saw that there's no fee, and I think we are so lucky to have that kind of visa sponsorship without fee. So that's they uh, what that's what they offer. Yeah, I researched about that, and I I learned that. Um, they don't really want to charge teachers, but they charge the school. So actually, you need to be thankful to your school because because of them, kaya wala kayong babayaran. All right. So so for you, Raj, your program sponsor is wala, nothing, zero. Yes, no, zero, <laughs> now, ma'am, zero. Yes. How much did you spend for your evaluated transcript? Yung health insurance mo. How much show money did you? um do you need to show um yeah so all of this so for the uh credential evaluation i chose pantran ma'am as suggested by you and you have given me the link and i paid around i think that's 21000 pesos here in our currency so it's around four hundred dollars, I guess, because there, uh, there are like verifications and all that, and there is an additional fee for that. Yes, and then how about the health insurance? How, um, how many months required? Health purchase? insurance. I I don't have that health insurance idea for now, ma'am. Right. I I still don't have that. So at this stage, you are not yet. Um, required to pay because my mga sponsors kasi na, they will not really send the DS plus 19 without you buying the health insurance. So, um, so for the record, Raj, is your DS plus 19 coming? Yes, ma'am. The message na po ang aking, uh, like she is the head of the IAG. She messaged me through email that uh, she's going to send because uh, she got my uh home address here in the philippines all right now did you do some medical um certificate did you do some medical um checkup mm, no medical checkup or certification 
as of now, I don't think if if in, in the coming days they will require me to undergo. All right. Such and uh, show process. money. How about the show money? How much? The show money, the minimum that they require us is to have at least $4,000. And I am so thankful to my friend who is in New Jersey because she... <laughs> Yes, I know you know her, ma'am. My very good friend, Zo, from New. Shout out to you, Zo and Abel. Thank you for lending me the money that I need for my uh, uh, application. Yes. So for our audience, wag kayong matakot sa show money kasi that is, hindi naman yan, like, they will not, the agency will not get it. Um, It will just prove them that you will have enough funds when you arrive here in the USA. All right, so I think Raj was able to um, answer the stage one. Now let's start with um, Charlie. How about you? Hello, good day to everyone again. So my visa sponsor is Amity. No? So the sponsor is, the sponsor fee, the program sponsor fee is about $200. Po. Okay, $200. No? And I chose also Spantran as my evaluated transcript. No? So I paid for almost um, $415 and that would be processed uh, in five days. Limang araw nilang pinurasas yun and then together with the hard copy na. So medyo mabilis na siya that time. And I had also my health insurance um, sponsored also by the Amity, no visa sponsor ko. And that's good for three months. That's cost $274. Um, dollars po, $274. And then sa, in terms naman po dun sa bank statement, no, so parang na-require lang naman kami, mag I ask them to, kung magkano ba yung minimum. So they said na it's okay if that would be 100,000 or 120. Um, okay na yun. Um, at an magagamit mo rin naman, makukuha mo rin naman yun after the bank statement, na makapag-present yung statement, na bank statement. So, nilagay ko na doon is 200,000 pesos para sabi ko mas safe na safe. Pero parang require lang naman nila is at least 100,000 pesos. Um, yun, yung service fee is $220, no? After nung sa ano natin, sa ng DS2019 natin. Um, dun sa naman sa health requirement, um, kasi um, they need MMR, the vaccine, no? So, mura lang naman siya dun sa mga hospital na kinakailangan. Of course, yung COVID vaccine, kailangan talaga natin. Saka yung MMR. Mura lang siya, parang I think, nasa 1,000 pesos. Parang something like that. So, All right. Lang. Yes, yung service fee na na-mention ni Charlie, true to all yun, the same regardless kung ano yung visa sponsor mo kasi that is gonna be paid directly to the U.S. Department of State. That is to maintain the J-1 program, right? That we are all in, that many people are enjoying. So, all right. Thank you so much, Charlie. Um, Next is Liz. Yes, po. for um, Global Educational Concepts, naman, ma'am, or Jack, GEC, um, let me just, um, uh, let me have my notes, po, to give the exact figures. Um, for my program fee, I paid, like, more or less $2,000. That's around 100000 or 200000 point pesos. And then insurance is $999. So that's, sa Jack kasi po, it's package na po. So when you pay your program fee, you should also pay your insurance fee. So ganon. And Good then for, for how many months, Liz, yung insurance na dapat na bilhin mo? Ano siya, ma'am? Like, um, for the health card, kasi binigyan ako ng health card afterwards. So nilagay lang nila is $90 per month. So ito ang babayaran ko po. So, so are, are you nilagay. required to pay for 12 months? Hindi po siya nakalagay, ma'am, kung ilang months yes. or like years okay. pero ang nilagay lang po is per month like how much mm -hmm. then right. so and then for the bank statement uh they required me to have um two thousand dollars so like i was able to raise 120 thousand in pesos and then for the vaccine i'm so like i would say i'm so lucky enough kasi hindi ako inanapa ng mmr vaccine to school so i only have like my covid vaccine and then for the service fee it's the same also with the other teachers it's 220 dollars so yun po all right so um, and then for the credential evaluation yeah. then ma'am 
yeah. sorry for for the credential evaluation i chose um spantran i think it took only one week so they gave me the um, electronic copy afterwards so i spent uh, more or less fifteen thousand for it in pesos all right <clears throat> Thank you so much. All right. So now, um, just for the record, um, yung GEC kind of expensive shock because they want to, um, they are asking for the payment for their first annual fee na yun. Okay, parang advance lang. Pero, which is the same din naman sa ibang mga sponsor. Pero yung iba, yes, like Charlie, they will just be asked to pay it pag nandito na sa US. So the difference, di ba? Pero mm -hmm. yes, marami pa din gustong um kumupunta sa sa GEC so yeah pero so far among the rest so parang nasa na, na, nasa kay Raj yung corona di ba? so wala siyang binayaran um that's a dream right that's a dream so there but you know all of you are very lucky indeed because um yung pera naman is you can always earn it here ang importante is um okay yung process niyo and you will be coming all here very soon now so we're done with the stage one. So when I say stage one, yun ang complete ng requirements pago isa nilang DS 2019. So who can explain? Ano ba yung DS 2019 na to? Bakit naman sobrang sikat nito? Lagi naman saan ka na ba? Lahat ng tao, laging ito yung bukam bibig. So they really look for this. They really want this so badly yung DS 2019. So sino ba to? Tao ba to? <laughs> Pagkain? So, who can explain it? I think the S2019 is like the employer-employee agreement. So, I think it's like that. Well, All right. Although, I don't have it yet now. <laughs> okay, how about Charlie? Um, the S2019 is a contract no, coming from the US po. We're in, um, indicated dito yung number, yung number mm -hmm. natin, and yung salary natin, that we really have to present sa US Embassy during our visa interview. And then the specific school, kung saan tayo magtuturo, and the state also. Doon nakalagay po dun sa DS-2019. Yes. Yes. That's so true. It's, uh, two copies of paper talaga siya na talagang bawal. Bawal maiwala. <laughs> yeah. So, ang DS-2019 talaga is, that's an important document that certifies that you are eligible to join the J1 exchange program. And yes, please take care of that because you need to hold that all throughout your stay. All right, so make sure that you will take care of that. So that is DS of 1999. Hindi siya tao, hindi siya pagkain, pero it's a document na <laughs> Once meron ka ng DS of that means okay na yung program sponsor mo. So you are gonna use that one to file or to schedule a visa appointment because the visa stamp will come from the U.S. Embassy in your home country. So now, stage two na tayo. So, sa stage 2 naman is, how much nagasto sa DS-160? Do you need to buy a, a local plane ticket? So, yeah, who wants to start? Alright, Liz, it's your turn. Sige po, for my DS-160, I paid um, 8000 plus for the visa appointment po. That's and pesos. I, yes, pesos po. Um, and then... Di ko na masay in dollars kasi nakalimutan ko baka makagive ako ng maling figures. And then for my local plane ticket going to Manila, I spent like 6,5999. Like 6,000 pesos. Um, so yun long po. trip na yan. Yes, ma'am. From Mindanao to Manila mm -hmm. and then, yes po. Kasi yung iba is they, they will go to the embassy pero hindi na sila uuwi. Like they will just stay in Manila because they want to wait for their visa. And then they want to wait for the safe or oh, ganon. But anyway, how about you? Thank you, Liz. How about Charlie? Yes, um, I paid sa RCBC, no, yung visa appointment fee ko, and it costs eight thousand nine hundred sixty. Okay, so and ito lang naman ako sa Tagaytay City, so medyo malapit lang ako sa US Embassy. Oh, yun lang. So eight thousand nine hundred sixty sa RCBC. Mabilis lang. <laughs> Like how Tapos, many um, hours bago siya na posted? Bali nagbayad kasi ako ng umaga within the day nung nagtanong ako kasi when I asked them sabi nila inaabot daw at least 24 hours yes. isang pa daw 2 days um, it depends naman daw when I asked dun sa 
kay ate kanina doon sa bangko, sabi nila, it depends daw po sa system. Minsan kasi down ng system. Pero pag okay naman ang system, parang within the day, napupost naman siya kaagad sa system. All right. Now, how about you, Raj? I hope I'm on the same level, pero wala pa po ako sa oh, D- yeah. DS-160. <laughs> yes. So Raj is still waiting for his DS-119, but coming na siya. As yes. In, na shift yes, na po. siya. Yes. All right. So, yes. Interesting. Okay. Now, all right. So, once mayroon ka ng visa appointment. Now, let me just um talk about this. Did you do expedite appointment and how did you do it? Who wants to share their experience? Sige, ako na lang po mauna, ma'am. Uh, in my um case po, like I scheduled yung I have my original schedule talaga. So, that was August. They gave me August 9. 9. So, yun po, malayo na. And then, um, after that, I requested an emergency uh, request. So, and then I waited one day and a half. Yeah, parang two days. And then they gave me, they reserved a slot for me. So, yun na po, parang mag-request ka lang so, sa the same site kung saan ka nag-book ng appointment mo po. All right. So, that's nice. How about Charlie? May nahirapan ka ba magpa-expedite appointment kumuha Ay, ng ma'am, additional lang po. Um okay. when when you request an emergency pa, uh, emergency appointment, you should upload your um, job offer and then um, if my letter ka coming from your visa sponsor, that would be better po. That would be good. All right, because they will base their decision from there, right? Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. How about you, Charlie? Uh, meron po akong expedite letter coming from the school na pagtuturuan ko na I have to go there on at least July 21, before July 21. So medyo mabilis lang naman kapag po may ganun na letter po tayo. Mabilis po i-grant po sa atin. All right, just to make sure na clear sa audience natin. So um, after yung after yung mag-pay ng yung sa visa appointment na 8,000 pesos, um, next nag pay na kayo, di ba? Then you completed the DS-160 form online. All right. So the first thing you need to do is to book a regular schedule. Is that right? Okay. After you book the regular schedule, um, how many days mag appear yung option sa online, sa website, for the expert appointment? Like, how does it look like? Can you, like, um, because personally, I don't see it. Before, I remember when I did my expert appointment, it was like an email. I just emailed them. But ngayon, I, re- I, I heard that meron ng option dun sa online or sa website mismo na you will upload everything. Uh, sa experience ko, ma'am, like after I logged out ng sa site and then nag in ako, automatic na siya may option. Like, um, ano yun? Nakalimutan ko. Basta may option siya para expedite your um, schedule. Pero hindi ko siya kin- uh, nag-click at that time kasi wala pa akong like letter from my visa sponsor. And then, so I had to wait at the time. Pero automatic na po siya, ma'am. Parang request yan na the teacher needs to be here in the U.S. before school year starts. So that yes. would be really helpful. Um, it will give you um, more chances to get the earliest schedule. All right, so both of you were able to expedite your appointment, right? Yes, po. Granted siya. All right, so that's good. So how about DEPID PS? You don't need to tell me the entire process because um, for the information of everyone, I already made a video about the detailed resignation process for DEPED um, for this year, 2022. So please check it out if you haven't done so. Um, Nandun na yung... Ano talaga yung gagawin step by step. Pero ngayon, um, I forgot to ask them about this. Did you spend anything um, in your clearance? Kahit 10 pesos lang yan <laughs> sa stamp. So did you spend anything? Yes. How about Raj? So far ngayon, meron ka bang na-spend na? Ay, yeah. Ayan, ma'am. For my uh, experience regarding the clearance school base, uh, I was required to have my termination of a, uh, account in land bank and for the certificate they I, I paid 200 pesos and that's the only uh, thing that I paid for during the clearance in school base all right how about Charlie um for the information of others no hindi kasi ako under talaga ng DepEd but I'm currently teaching sa DepEd in an elementary level under ako ng local school board. 
LSB teacher ako ng City Hall dito sa Tagaytay City. Wala pa kong item sa public. Kung baga, I started last um, October, tapos nag-resign na ako nitong May. Waiting pa ako sa item ko talaga. When I ask yung EVP program natin, no? yung EVP rather, na kung ano magiging process ko, kasi hindi naman ako under ng DepEd. Um, sabi nila kahit LSB, nagtuturo naman ako sa DepEd Elementary, um, sasabayan ko pa din yung mga item, yung mga national teacher, kung paano ba yung processing nila. So, wala akong nagastos except doon sa panggas, papunta doon sa, sa division office, sa regional, and then yun lang. Um, doon sa division office, clearance lang naman ang kailangan ko din, katulad ng mga binigay naman sa ka sa kanila na no, clearance and then yung mga kaiba pang mga service records sa kailangan, wala namang dapat bayaran doon. Naman ako sa regional, namin sa Region 4A, Calabarzon, wala rin naman akong binayaran doon. Alright, thank you so much, Charlie. How about Liz? Yes po, for non uh, depa teachers, you only need to ask for a clearance from your school. I mean, that's yes. very easy lang, no? So just ask for a clearance to, you know, show na wala kang mga obligations. And then, you're good to go. That's right. Sobrang easy talaga if you come from pri private school. Now, let's continue. So, so ngayon, I, I know wala pa kayo sa stage na to. Um, because after your visa approval, yay, let's claim it. Visa approval talaga. After your visa approval, you will need to um, go and accomplish your CFO. CFO is important. CFO is um, Commission on Filipinos Overseas. Now, I got this from a, a teacher who got her CFO sticker already. And she was actually Junez, my last guest in my previous vlog. So she said she paid a total of 205 pesos. And that is cheaper compared to what I paid before. Kasi ngayon kasi, wala nang face-to-face -face na seminar. Before, I really experienced listening to um, experiences. Meron kami, parang isang klase kami, and it was fun. Um, we needed to hear ano talaga dapat i-expect namin sa US. Pero ngayon, due to number of participants, they did it. Ikaw na lang, parang online na lang. You will, you will just watch it. And then, yeah, and then you need to pay 205 for the CFO sticker. And it took them, I think, five days total processing time. And then they finally got their CFO sticker. Okay, so very cheap, 205. Now, plane ticket. I think uh, medyo expensive ngayon, no? Pero plane ticket is something na different naman yan. Um, so, depende yan kung, kung how, how short the time na magbubuka. And yeah, so meaning kung magubuka ngayon, then three days from now yung flight mo, medyo expensive yan. Pero kung maybe weeks, and then prices can change as well. So I think yun lang, right guys? So thank you so much for um, you, coming po. here and yeah. helping me thank out you, coach. to share this information to our, um, to our audience. So now, before I let you go, hindi pa tayo tapos, <laughs> I want you to inspire our audience kasi marami sa kanila na they are losing hope kasi marami sa kanila na nag na fail sa mga interviews di ba kayo ba lagi um did you experience ba na na fail or baka um one time lang talaga yung mga success nyo like when you got your first interview right away you got your job offer kasi yun ang tingin nila like they're not good enough kasi nga they fail the interview, their first interview, then they don't want to push through it anymore. So what can you advise for these teachers Now they're losing hope because they think na hindi sila para sa U.S.? Yun ang usual na narinig ko, like, I think U.S. is not for me, Miss G. Because we tried to have their interviews, pero na-fail ako. It, 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 it feels so bad, di ba, kung ma-fail ka sa isang interview. Now, what is your experience and what can you advise? Yes, Raj. I think uh, patience is really a virtue. But on my uh, personal uh, experience, uh, I, everything is like expedite, just like the processes in different agencies. Because I had my um, 
interview last July, uh, June 21, and I I was hired the following day, and then everything happened in just a blink of an eye, and I'm doing the process already. So I am so thankful and grateful for for your presence, for your assistance, because I am now in the process, and uh, I hope to see you soon. You lang sana all, di ba? Sana all. Pero yeah, thank you so much, Charlie. How about Charlie? What can you say? Um, sa application natin kasi nito, one thing that I could really um, attest on this one, you really have to be resilient. Okay? Mm-hmm. Kinakailangan natin maging matatag on this one, no? So, I'm not bragging this one, no? Just, of course, with the help of Miss Alisa. Actually, I had three job offers sa USA, pero mas pinili ko dito sa Arizona Kasi kumbaga, I could really feel na mas mag enjoy ako dito kasama si Miss Alisa, kasama pa yung mga ibang friends na nandun ko, no? Compare sa iba sa Florida sa school, no? Um, if you are really passionate sa dreams mo, ba Sa buhay mo, you could really achieve the zenith of success. For me, you really have to be resilient, eh. No matter what, anumang interview yan, paghandaan natin. Because for me, there's no word good luck. If you will just give your best, binigay mo ang lahat-lahat, hindi yun luck because you exerted your effort, di ba? So maging passionate lamang tayo sa decision natin sa buhay, maging risk taker tayo talaga. Ako kasi ganung tao eh, napaka risk taker ko. Pag nalaman ko na may ganyan, grab agad ako. Okay? But of course, I really have to assess it. Saka maging resilient tayo, especially ngayon, sa mga kinakaharap natin, mga challenges natin. And katulad na sinabi ni Sir Raj, talagang really be patient. Okay? Sabi nga nila, be patient. Okay? Pray, hope, and don't worry. Yay! That's nice. I like it. How about Liz? Yes, po. So, my, I started my application January. Diba, ma'am? So, thank you po sa assistance guidance and tips and then um well it was i had sleepless nights ganon like you have i mean you have no choice but to wake up early in the morning just for the interview and then after that hindi ka na wala, wala nang contact after so like it took months no before ako na receive ng job offer pero like i also cried you know no kasi like after interview akala mo pagkabukas meron na pero wala pero yun nga never lose hope and then you pray kasi pag sayo sayo talaga and then to the point na like gusto ko na mag give up pero to the point na hindi dili sa ako mag give up so i don't want to give up and then um it it happens na yun tatlong school log offer and then so yun na um hindi ko na expect na silang tatlo that like i had to choose sa, sa tatlong schools so yun na um, my advice is just don't give up and then pray kasi wala yung posible wala yung posible that's really true I really believe in prayers na um, if you really put all your heart, um, God yeah. will make a way to give it to you. But always, always then listen for his um, leading, di ba? Sometimes we really want something, pero hindi pala yun sa'yo. Hindi yun, hindi pa right time, pero um, mm-hmm. mostly naman binibigyan niya basta if you trust him na everything is possible, basta i-ask mo sa kanya. And he, he wants to see your, your complete surrender talaga. Hindi pwede na mm-hmm. Lord, help me. Pero at the back of your mind, you, you think you can do it on your own, on your own skills. Pero um, at the end of the day, wala talaga tayo magawa without Him. So yeah. Yeah, I praise God for my life too when I started here 2016. But we're still here and we can still stay. And right now, I already have my H-1B visa. So, And I'm sure kayo din um, in the future. Um things will change as well. So, maganda naman ang J1, five years naman siya, but um, wala imposible because I was four years as J1 and now I got H1B last 2020. So, possible siya. Now, thank you so much again, everyone. And I hope to see you all here. Please, let's get together, okay? Thank you, guys. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it helps you decide if you're going to push through direct hiring. All right, so I hope to see you in my next video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow my YouTube channel, Alisa Life So Bye, everybody. Bye, Thank Goodbye, you. Everyone.